Good afternoon and welcome to the 1 p.m. hearing of the Committee on Housing. This meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed live on YouTube. You will find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the Legislature's website. This Zoom meet meeting and YouTube live stream event will include the 1 p.m. agenda of the Committee on Housing. In the unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, this committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business on, uh, on Tuesday, the 19th of April at 1 p.m. in this room, room 225, and a public notice will be posted on the legislature's website. For all those participating remotely, testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify. Okay, so... Um, Numbers, today we have six general uh, governor's messages. We have three for the HHFDC board, and we also have three for the HPHA board. <clears throat> um, what I think we can do to, in the interest of time, because I know we're all busy, is to go through the hearing and to take all the testimony on the three HHFDC nominees first, and then have questions for the three nominees followed by the hearing portion for the HPHA nominees, and then we'll ask questions of the three HPHA nominees. Does that sound good numbers? Okay. Our first GM today is GM 637, submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Board of Directors of the Hawaii Housing Finance and Development Corporation gubernatorial nominee, Gary Mackler. Our first test, or we have several testifiers, uh, Derek S.K. Kawakami, County of Kauai Mayor in support, EAH Housing in support, HHOC Housing and Land Trust in support, and Karen Seddon in support. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on GM 637? Okay, is Mr. Mackler here? I am present, uh, Chair. Thank you, Mr. Mackler. Would you like to make a statement to the committee? Um, just to say, uh, I appreciate the consideration you're giving me to continue serving on the HHFTC board. I have been on this board for approximately two and a half years. I, uh, in my work life with the County of Kauai, uh, working in the development division of the housing agency, I was able to work most of those years with this organization. It's always been a very professionally professional group of individuals working there. And I have seen that firsthand as a board member, and I would like to continue to assist um, HHFDC and to assist the state in pro producing more affordable housing. Thank you. Um, please stay on the line, Mr. Mackler. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be questioning all the HHFDC nominees together. Okay. Okay, is there anyone else wishing to testify on Governor's Message 637? Okay, if not, we'll move to our next governor's message, 759, for the HHFDC board, Jay Kimura. We have um, in support, Jeremy Kimura, Grant Togashi, and Anson Lee. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on governor's message, 759? Okay, is the nominee present? Not present, Chair. Thank you. Okay, and uh, our third HHFDC nominee is GM822, Jason Bradshaw. And we have several testifiers. We have Democratic Party of Hawaii Labor Caucus in support, Iron Workers Stabilization Fund in support, Democratic Party of Hawaii Education Caucus in support, Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association in support, Hawaii Masons and Plasterers Unions uh, in support. Um, Local 630 OPCMIA in support. Kate Stanley in support. And Mike Galoy Sr. in support. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on Governor's Message 822? Aloha, Chair. This is Anthony McConnell Paris on behalf of the Hawaii Iron Workers Stabilization okay. Fund and Managing Director T. George Paris wishing to testify orally if that's appropriate. Yes, please go ahead. 
Aloha Chair and Committee members. Um, the Iron Worker Stabilization Fund wholeheartedly supports the nomination of Mr. Jason Bradshaw to the Hawaii Housing and Finance Development Corporation. We have experience with him for the last decade of being able to do work to help Hawaii's working families. And uh, we believe that his insightfulness and his generational knowledge of understanding the plight of younger people in Hawaii needing housing as a primary um, economic means to be able to afford to live here in Hawaii, we actually support him very much. So we hope for a favorable outcome and available for questions. Mahalo. Thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to testify on Governor's Message 822? Okay. Well, I see we have the nominee. Would you like to make a statement? Real quick point, Senator. Um, thank you, um, Senator Chang, Chair Chang, Vice Chair Kanuha, Senator Moriwaki, Senator Carl Rhodes, also Senator Favela, for scheduling my nomination um, to serve on the HHFDC board. I look forward to serving the state of Hawaii and helping to address our affordable housing crisis that exists in Hawaii. We really do need to build a significant amount of housing in Hawaii, affordable and for basically the work, you know, um, a workforce population as well. And we need to get doing that very quickly and very fast. So I look forward to that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so members, as I mentioned earlier, um, we'll do some questioning now for the three nominees for um, the HHFTC board. Um, members, do we have any questions? I do. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just to Mr. Mackler, uh, he's been on the board. You've been on for two years. I just um, and have had experience. I just want to know what your experience has been. We, you know, that we have a major housing shortage, and we're trying to build affordable housing. Uh, and what you've done. Uh, serving on the board and what you plan to do if you continue. Are you there? Can you hear me? Um, yes. yes, we can. Thank you. I'm not. Oh, okay. Here I am. Thank you. Uh, well, I, um, my focus has been on production, supply, and how to be efficient in increasing or getting the supply out that we can and increasing supply. Um, I can give you one example of something that I uh, noticed when I was on the board about projects that were receiving finance, financial commitments very early on into their pre-development, projects that required discretionary approvals like zoning or 201H approvals. And I felt that some of these projects uh, were receiving financing too, too early in the process and uh, we're taking too long to actually reach the point of groundbreaking. So during this past year, we worked on amendments to the what's called the qualified allocation plan, which is the criteria that's used to evaluate projects. A big part of that is project readiness. And we moved some of the requirements to uh, what we call uh, minimum thresholds so that projects that would come in the door seeking financing would be much farther along and, and ready to, to, construct, to develop, construct. So knowing the urgency that we have to produce more affordable housing, I felt that was one contribution that I've been able to make uh, while serving on the board. Is there anything, <clears throat> excuse me, anything you've seen to streamline the process even further so we can get more housing built, affordable housing built uh, to meet our major needs? Um, well, I think carrying a full staff is, is very important uh, for HHFTC to be able to uh, administer the multiple uh, programs that they're responsible for. I think that uh, with the volume of projects that are sitting in the queue right now for, that have been preliminarily approved for financing and the new projects that have come in just through the 2022 round called the Consolidated Application, uh, there really are not enough resources, financial resources, to move all of those projects out. So I would, I would want the HHFVC leadership, along with the board, to, to really uh, uh, explain the situation in in very, very detailed way uh, to the legislature to look at any possibility for increased resources, because I think. Um, uh, we have the potential 
to finance more projects if we have more resources. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Members, any further questions for our HHFDC nominees? Okay, if not, I'm going to make a short statement. Um, and I'm also going to be asking the same questions of all the nominees. I have had a chance to speak with you folks um, in meetings. And I just want to reiterate some of the points that I've made to you um, in my meetings in this public forum so that we're all accountable. As you know, we are in the middle of the worst housing shortage in Hawaii's history. We have record housing prices in all four counties. Three of the four counties have house prices over $1.1 million. Um, the example I always give is my father, who as a UH professor with one state salary was able to buy a house. Today, for me to buy that same house would take over 40 years of my entire state salary as a legislator. As a result, we've had five straight years of population decline, a trend that is accelerating and which gives us one of the fastest rates of population decline of any state in the nation. HHFDC is legally and morally responsible for solving this housing shortage. The Hawaii State Planning Act, HRS 226-19B states, it shall be the policy of this state to effectively accommodate the housing needs of Hawaii's people. And I think we can all agree that we are not effectively accommodating the housing needs of Hawaii's people. We heard a little bit earlier about the financing role of HHFDC, but it's not just the Hawaii Housing Finance Corporation, it's the Hawaii Housing Finance and Development Corporation. And in that capacity, HHFDC has done almost nothing to reverse this shortage. Why hasn't HHFDC advocated for greater housing production at state-owned lands near the rail station, such as Aloha Stadium? Why hasn't HHFDC used its co-chairmanship of the TOD Council to increase housing production in those TOD areas? Why hasn't HHFDC secured long-term affordability for tenants of the Front Street Apartments in Lahaina, Maui? Why has HHFDC opposed efforts to create a Department of Housing? Why did HHFDC insist on incorporating ceded lands into the public lands exemption it was requesting from the legislature through last year? Why does HHFDC do so little housing development, which is half of the mission in its title? So I want to ask two questions, just two, because I know we're all busy. Um, but I've tried to make these questions very clear, and they're, they're yes or no questions. So I'm going to first ask. Um, Gary Mackler, since you were first. The first question, which is, will you commit to requiring HHFDC to create plans to produce 65,000 housing units by 2025, 130,000 units by 2035, or however many units it will take to meet the state's demand? Uh, Senator, I will commit to a plan. Uh, I think, as you know, you and I had a conversation several days ago about this. And uh, as I indicated to you in my responses, my written responses, that it, in my estimation, uh, producing 65,000 units by the year 2025 is not a reachable goal, but that we should be planning for goals that are reachable within an acceptable time frame. Uh, and I know you mentioned 2035 when we discussed this. Um, the, the process for development uh, simply could not be uh, done within the time frame of 2025 to, to reach anywhere close to 65,000 units. So uh, I think that uh, revising that timeline would be appropriate, um, and I will commit to that. Thank you. Okay, so... Um... Since we have you here, uh, Mr. Bradshaw, I'll ask you the same question. Will you commit to requiring HHFDC to create plans to produce 65,000 units by 2025, 130,000 units by 2035, or however many units it will take to meet the state's demand? The short answer is yes. Um, working families in Hawaii are struggling. I think we all know that. Um, as you mentioned just earlier in your statement, um, home prices are averaging over a million dollars throughout the state. No working family can afford that. We need to do everything we can. That includes the HHFDC, includes the legislature, includes all, all parties to address our housing crisis because it is a crisis. Um, we need to do everything we can to reach that goal of 65,000 homes. While some people say it might not be possible, we need to figure out a way to make it possible. 
So yes, I do agree that we need to get to that goal of 65,000 and to the 120,000 or more homes needed in the year 2030 or beyond. We cannot be seeing local families leaving the state of Hawaii, which is what they're doing right now. Um, our families are being split apart because they cannot afford homes. This is homes that are for affordable housing, but also people who are working professionals cannot afford to stay in Hawaii that have good paying jobs. These are individuals who make 80 or $100,000 a year, but cannot even afford to be able to buy a single family home or apartment. And that is unacceptable and that is wrong. We need to do everything we can to keep those local families in Hawaii. Otherwise, Hawaii is not gonna be the Hawaii that all of us grew up in and knew about, right? And we don't wanna see that happen. It's already becoming a very different state. And let's try to keep all of our residents, local residents in Hawaii. So yes, I will commit to you. I will commit to the state of Hawaii. I'm doing everything I can as an individual, serving on the HHFDC, working with all of you, working with you specifically, Senator, to address the housing crisis. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, is Mr. Kimura with us? He's still not with us. He's trying. Can we call him? We have his number. He's having trouble logging into Zoom. Okay. Can you coordinate to try to? Would it? Would we be able to um, appear and would be able to ask ask him questions? I think we could probably just have to bring us to the phone. Can we call? Him? Can we have him call? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can try. All right. Well, we're trying to get our third nominee um, with us, but he's having technical difficulties. Um, let me move, therefore, to my second question to the two of you who are here. Um, so thank you for your affirmative responses to the first question. So the second question is, will you commit? So, well, it's been brought to my attention that annual reviews, no reviews are conducted of the HHFDC leadership, which is... Um, of course, a core responsibility of any board with respect to its, the leadership of the organization for which it is a board. So the second question is, will you commit to an annual review of the executive director that will hold the executive director accountable for producing the number of housing units in the plan? And we'll start with you, Mr. Mackler. Uh, yes, I will commit to uh, conducting annual reviews. I believe there's a great deal of value in doing so, and I, I have uh, been through uh, upward appraisals, uh, which, you know, not only involve a board of directors, but also staff, key staff. And I think there's a, a, a value to be uh, derived from doing so. Uh, it's, and I know you had a second part to your question. I'm sorry, Senator Chang, you, you asked um, about having the executive director commit to the plan. Was that your let me repeat the question. Will you yes, commit please. to an annual review of the executive director that will hold the executive director accountable for producing the number of housing units in the plan? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bradshaw. Again, the question, will you commit to an annual review of the executive director that will hold the executive director accountable for producing the number of housing units in the plan? Yes, we need transparency and accountability. And again, working families need relief at Hawaii. We need to do everything we can to um, address this housing shortage and housing crisis that we're in. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we do have our third HHFDC nominee with us, Mr. Kimura. So, um, Mr. Kimura, for your information, if you can hear us, we've been yes. asking the HHFDC board nominees two questions, and I'm gonna repeat them to you. Um, the other uh, two nominees just answered them. The first question is, Will you commit to requiring HHFDC to create plans to produce 65,000 units by 2025, 130,000 units by 2035, or however many units it will take to meet the state's housing demand? I, yes, I commit to uh, working with the board and the staff um, on a planning process so we can uh, meet the goals of um, more affordable housing. Thank you. And the second question is, will you commit to an annual review of the executive director that will hold the executive director accountable for producing the number of housing units in the plan? Uh, yes, but um, you know, this is not a normal board. So, you know, I'm appointed by the, the governor and uh, the director is appointed by the governor. So, um, but as far as um, holding the director to a plan, um, 
I'd be happy to do that and work with the board. Thank you. Um, Mr. Kimura, since you weren't here earlier, is there a, any further statement you'd like to make to the committee? Um, I look forward to um, working on the board. Um, if there's any further questions um, you have for me, I'll be happy to answer those. Thank you. Members, do we have any questions for Mr. Kimura? I, I, I would. Hi, I'm Mr. Kimura. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I, I just looked at your resume and you, you were a prosecutor. You, you've worked mostly with um, a criminal and, and um, you know, in, in the prosecutorial role, but um, you have had some experience in working with the community. What would you bring to the board? Uh, as you know, the, you've heard that the, the real focus is on having more affordable housing that our residents can afford. So what would you bring to the board? Um, as, as a prosecutor, um, you know, housing was always an issue. Uh, we had a uh, victim witness unit and, you know, victims of domestic violence, um, sexual assault, um, other types of crimes, um, um, housing was an issue. Um, we also work with, um, the community and other agencies on developing a, a strategic plan to uh, address crime in the community. Uh, we um, obviously had assistance from the federal government in developing the plan, but we work closely with uh, the courts, the um, um, other government agencies and the community uh, to develop those plans. So. It, Hopefully I can bring some um, um, experience to the staff in terms of um, developing some sort of plan. Have you had any experience working with developers or with the county uh, in terms of building housing or at least beyond the plan, you know, executing on, on getting housing for our residents? Um, not specifically housing. Um, for residents, uh, we had several GIAs where we developed um, uh, emergency repairs. Um, as the director, we also uh, um, had a program called um, weatherization, where we worked with uh, low-income families to help weatherize their their houses. Um, we also had the um, a program to um, help low-income people uh, repair, do emergency repairs to their houses. Uh, and it's before my time, but the agency was involved in um, helping uh, with housing for uh, the Kalapana area when they had their first uh, major disaster with the lava flow. Um, I also served on the um, uh, Big Island Housing Foundation uh, for a short while while I was director. So I'm somewhat familiar with the, the housing programs. Uh, we also, I also sit on committees that work with uh, uh, issues of the um, housing voucher, helping people to uh, save money to, um, uh, to um, be in a position to purchase a house. So it is a down payment. And um, And, thank, you. Um, thank you. Thank you. For any thank further you. questions for the nominee? Okay. Uh, thank you very much. So we'll move forward. Thank you. Um, thank you. With our three nominees to the board of HPHA. And the same thing, I'd like to address two questions to those three nominees at the end after we conduct the hearing part. Um, the first of the three nominees is Governor's Message 773, submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Board of Directors of the Hawaii Public Housing Authority, gubernatorial nominee Robert Hall, for a term to expire 6-30-2026. We have several testifiers. Our first testifier is the Hawaii Public Housing Authority in support. Aloha Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Hakim Wansafi, Executive Director for the Housing Authority. Thank you for... Uh, uh, having this hearing, we are in very strong support of GM773. 
Uh, as you know, the board directors uh, needs variety of life experiences and professional expertise in order to effectively fulfill its roles as a policy guide for our agency. Uh, Mr. Hall, knowledge and experience as a former employee of HHA and HCDCH, as well as the Department of Hawaiian Lands, uh, will continue to make him a great asset to our board, providing leadership, support, dedication, and care uh, to the state's often overlooked and underserved low-income population. Uh, my staff and I uh, enjoyed working with him, and we look forward to uh, four more years of working with Director Hall. Thank you very much for hearing my testimony. Thank you. Um, we have DHHL in support, the Operating Engineers Local 3 Hawaii in support, Hawaii Operating Engineers Industry Stabilization Fund in support, the Mutual Housing Association of Hawaii in support, the Lanai Community Health Center in support, Waiohuli Hawaiian Homestead Association in support, Glenn Yamasaki, several individuals in support, including Glenn Yamasaki, Dre Kalili, Steve Aruda, Danette Nakaoka, Tamar DeFries, Joe Addy Brown, WHHA Inc. in support, Mililani B. Trask in support, Karen Piltz in support, and Doreen Canto in support. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on General, uh, Governor's Message 773? Okay, I see we have the nominee here. Would you like to make a statement before us? Um, I'm honored for the opportunity to continue to serve on the Rich Provincial Board. Um, as expressed in my resume, my whole life has been in affordable housing. And I still don't see you know, fruition what it's, it's intended to be. I have enough experience to tell you what not to do but I have enough optimism, especially with what's happening with the legislature now, and it's focused on addressing some of the obstacles that prevent affordable housing. But I'm optimistic that the agency can do its part to help with those. And I appreciate the opportunity the government's giving me um, for your consideration. Thank you. Okay, our next measure is Governor's Message 774, submitting Roy Katsuda for a directorship of the Hawaii Public Housing Authority. We have one testifier, Hawaii Public Housing Authority in support. Yes, uh, a lot Chair, Vice Chairs, members of the uh, committee. Uh, Mr. Katsuda has many years of real estate development and property management experience. Uh, did make him a great asset for our HPHA board as a low-income and houseless uh, advocate, Mr. Katsuda, ethical leadership, life experience, and professional expertise did in fact provide uh, our agency with effective policy guidance over the past three years. Uh, my staff and I look forward to continue working with uh, Mr. Katsuda, and we stand in very strong support. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any, anyone else wishing to testify on Governor's Message 774? Is Mr. Katsuda on the line? No, not present, Chair. Okay, thank you. Then we'll move forward to our final governor's message today, governor's message 799, nominating Crystal Nagao to the Hawaii Public Housing Authority Board. And again, we have one testifier, HPHA in support. Ms. So again, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, Ms. Nagao, years of real estate development, property management and facilities maintenance experience will make her a, certainly a great asset to the HPHA Board of Directors. We certainly look forward to her addition to our board and working with her uh, to further our mission of providing housing to the most vulnerable of our great state. Uh, therefore, we stand in very strong support of this nominee. 
Thank you very much for hearing this uh, governor message uh, 799. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on GM 799? Ms. Nagao, would you like to make a statement? Aloha, yes. Hi. Um, thank you, Honorable Sanders, for considering me for this position. I am um, very grateful, and I, I just want you to know that I have a huge under, understanding of the issues that, that we face when it comes to housing, low-income affordable housing. We're in the trenches every day as property managers. Um, I see it from a lot of different sides, and, and it's frustrating. And, and um, I just want you to know, though, though very nervous about this position, I'm, I have a lot of optimism that I can bring a lot to the table for our state and our community. I just wanted to thank you again. Thank you. Okay, is there anyone else wishing to testify on GM 799? Okay, if not, um, the three HPHA nominees, you heard my um, remarks earlier, and I wanted to ask the same two questions of you. So, um, Mr. Hall, if you could join us. The first question is, will you commit to requiring HPHA to create plans to produce 65,000 units by 2025, 130,000 units by 2035, or however many units it will take to meet the state's demand? Yes. And I, I say that with a lot of optimism. As I mentioned, uh, I am tracking the, the bills that the legislature has put forth. Uh, and I can tell you in my years of working in housing and since being retired, this is the most attention I've ever seen this building give housing, give to housing. Now, is that the final solution? No. Every single player that comes on this table and testifies in front of this committee has to work together in order to pull this off. And that's the only way it's going to be done. Every member on our board will emphatically say yes. That's the optimism we bring to the agency. That's what we believe in, that's what we strive for. The question is basically how we get there and more importantly, when we get there. The legislation that you folks have proposed, the opportunities, the funding that you're you know, giving consideration to for housing, you know, puts more tools in the toolbox than ever in the past. For the uh, Hawaii Public Housing Authority, we've already uh, come up with a development plan that produces close to 11,000 units. Question is, over this many years, not by 2025, maybe by 2035, but there's still a lot of things that needs to be done in order to achieve that. Uh, the toolbox that you're giving us gives us more opportunity to do that. Of the 11,000 or so unit, a good 8,000 is on the rail line, offering other opportunities, you know, um, uh, more funding resources. It's a matter of how to put all those pieces together. And that's what the agency needs to do. The board needs to hold the agency accountable to do that because nobody else can. And that's my commitment to serving on the board. I, I'd be a hypocrite if I tell you that, you know, I'll, I'll just reiterate, yeah, we can go and just walk away. I've lived this. I'm going on 40 years, but I've only been in house. That's all I know. And this is the time. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Um, do we have Mr. Katsuda with us? Yes. Um, but since he's not with us, we'll move to our next nominee, Ms. Nagao. Thank you, Sadar. Uh, my answer is yes. Uh, we're not able to um, gain any ground without a plan. And for me as a, a business owner, um, we need the plan. We need something to execute. At this point, I feel like we're just floating in space. But um, once we can put something together, then we can properly execute this across the board. So yes. Thank you. Okay, so the second question, so Mr. Hall, if you can rejoin us, will you commit to an annual review of the executive director that will hold the executive director accountable for producing the number of housing units in the plan? Uh, Senator and committee, yes. Uh, this present board has already established a tracking mechanism, a monthly report 
that by numbers gives us an idea where we are with all the planned development, where we are with our occupancy rate for public housing, where we are with our lease up for Section 8. All the housing components that the agency is charged to do. We look at that every month. That is a document that I'm proud to say this current uh, board of directors was able to construct. And it was done under the premises of accountability, trying to address the when. The how is also the, the, the hardest to, to deliver. We already know the what. You know, uh, when I came on board, uh, the first, I think, I, I mentioned to the committee that I only have one question for housing on its way. I, I really feel we're getting close to answering that question. So the answer yes. Thank you. And is Ms. Nagao with us? My answer would be yes, that I believe this is standard practice and we should be able to have a finger on the pulse as far as what's going on, um, how we're moving forward at what at rate and speed, the answer is yes. Thank you. Okay, we're still, we're still missing Mr. Katsuda. Is he still not available? Sure, not present, Chair. Oh, sorry. Oh, not present? Yeah, not present, Chair. Thank you, Senator Rhodes. Uh, for the two uh, HPHA nominees, can I ask, uh, well, it's half question, half commentary. Um, if you don't mind coming back up, Mr. Chuck. Um, so I, I represent the area that includes Mayor Wright Homes, and it's a very large, by, by Urban Honolulu standards, it's a very large parcel that's gonna be quite close to the rail. You know, the one corner will be within a couple of blocks. And I, it's it's so uh, puzzling to me why the why HPHA or or HHFTC hasn't looked at that for for redevelopment. The buildings are falling apart already. Uh, not that long ago, the the state was sued because of the lack of hot water and other problems. Well, why why doesn't HPHA want to redevelop a mayor right homes? Thank you, Senator. Um, HPHA. Uh, had initiated development plans for Marite Homes, I believe as far ago as maybe 2014, to start the planning process to potentially increase the density eightfold, go to almost 3,000 units in that same uh, footprint. Uh, there were challenges in getting that off the ground, challenges with the uh, selected developer that the, the agency faced, but the, HPHA is still committed to doing the development at Mayor Wright's. Uh, it makes sense. The location, you know, complemented by the rail can offer some business opportunities to help offset you know, the cost of development. So it's still on the plan. It's part of the, the, the tracker that we're doing right now to create those 11,000 units. Okay, thank you. Can mm -hmm. I uh, get uh, Ms. Nagao's answer on that as well? Why do, why do you think... Uh, why do you think HPHA has never done anything with what would appear to be a prime piece of urban real estate? Yes. Um, so thank you, Senator. Um, I can't speak to this issue as I'm not familiar with that property, but it, it sounds like there's um, availability for redevelopment. It sounds a little exciting. Um, it sounds like something that might not be repurposed, but just overall redone. Sounds like we, we own the land, which is half the battle as far as um, finding the property. I'm not sure what the zoning is, um, but I, I believe that's something that they should look at into, into developing and, and creating maybe a higher density project to bring more units, especially um, when you're looking at an area that you're not needing to think of vehicle-centric living because it's close to the rail which is very important in that area. Okay, well, I hope you'll, uh, if, uh, assuming you're confirmed, I hope you'll keep that in mind. There are some, there are some uh, neighborhoods uh, that don't want more affordable housing. Um, uh, Evil A is not one of them. We'll, we'll take as mm -hmm. much as we can get. 
Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Chair, I, I have one question, one more question. Mr. Hall, uh, I'm glad to hear an agency that has a tracking device <laughs> for meeting targets. Are you on target? And what happens when you're, uh, you don't meet the target? Um, I guess that's a question for all developers. Right now, we're a little bit behind target you know, because some of the unexpected outside of our realm uh, impacts that we have. We're concerned about the water to develop in town right now. We're not sure if that's going to have a, a wrench in our overall development plan. Um, our current project is up on School Street. Uh, we're a few months behind on breaking ground, and that's because we're working with the, with the city you know, on some of that. But that is the task. The task is to try to push through as best as we can through all of these things. The plan um, and the tracker that we watch every month is intended to keep us focused and not forget about a project over time. So uh, we'll continue to do that as board members. And if we fall behind, we'll, we'll try to get that back on track. If administratively we're not, you know, we're not cutting it, you know, with you know, administration, then we have to you know, try to resolve that. Well, I'm glad that that you are tracking, but I think it's you know one thing to track and the other to know why we're off track or you know slow and to be able to to actually execute and and have a project completed so um it would be good to keep on it if i may senator one of the things that you know i personally will hope for is that there's a more of a collaboration between all the housing producers it's cdc it's, you know, hcda hhfdc hha whoever department of hawaiian homelands you know that you know perhaps we can develop in unison and take advantage of quantities as opposed to you know shotgun approaches and then you get the attention of the water supply here the top four developers with water and all of that I, i'm sure there's a way to do that i'm not sure who does that but you know i would try to advocate for getting you know i i i lived through i was an uncle but i lived through hurricane Niki. I watch how that, that island restored itself, regulations and all. It, it was a crisis and they fixed it. So I, I'm optimistic given the right timing and opportunities that can happen again. I believe the chair has been trying to do that with the committees on both the House and the Senate. So uh, if, if not done legislatively, hopefully administratively, you folks can start trying to do that. You know, I think HBHA, you know, has to do what it needs to do. Hopefully it's in concert with everything else. And, you know, we're not taking four months just by arguing between departments. Thank you, Chair. Thank, Thank you. you. Any further questions? Okay. Um, if not, we will go into recess and we'll come back for decision making. Thank you. All right, welcome back to the Committee on Housing. We're here for decision-making on the six governor's messages for the HHFDC and HPHA boards that we're considering today. Um, the chair first wants to note that since um, Roy Katsuda, the nominee in GM 774, was not present today and was unable to answer our questions, we'll be deferring our decision-making on him. Um, we will give him an opportunity, we'll reschedule a hearing so that he'll have another chance to log in and hopefully there won't be any technical difficulties and we'll consider his nomination then. As for the other five nominations, GM 637, 759, 822, 773, and 799, um, to start with, the chair wants to note um, our extreme frustration with the slow pace of change on the housing shortage here in Hawaii. Um, for years, for decades, for generations, the housing shortage has only gotten worse. And um, in the tech sector, they have something called a bias toward action. If, the, if there's an opportunity to choose between action or inaction, we need action. And I want to note my deep frustration with the 
excuses, with the obstacles, with the problems that are raised, and with the lack of forward visionary thinking planning, how are we going to achieve the goal, um, especially at the first of the two agencies today? And so having conferred, I think this sentiment is shared by all of us, even though we all represent different communities, I think we're all deeply impacted by this housing shortage. And the responsibility for delivering on these results will rest in the hands of these members that we're voting on today. So I wanna impress upon every one of these GMs that it's the expectation of this committee that you will have a bias toward action, that you will implement plans, that you will create them, that you will implement them and hold the agency accountable to them. That is your job. That is the task that you are being given by this committee. And um, our committee will continue to hold you and the agencies accountable, as is the job of the legislature for producing these units. Because without them, every single day, um, people are leaving the islands. And that is, you know, the great tragedy of our age. Among other terrifying statistics, one of the ones that really I think should resonate with all of us most is that over half of the native Hawaiian population now lives outside the state of Hawaii. And I think that's just one testament to what decades of inaction have led us to. So um, I think that you've, you know, based on your answers to the questions that we've discussed today in this hearing and based on my conversations with each of you individually, I think you've gotten this message. And so, um, so the chair's recommendation for these five GMs will be to advise and consent. Um, and like I said, we'll be deferring GM 774 to um, uh, indefinitely, but we do intend to reschedule that hearing so that we can uh, ask the nominee, Mr. Katsuda, those questions. Okay, members, do we have any questions or discussion on the recommendations? Okay, if not, Vice Chair, so for GMs 637, 759, 822, 773, and 799, Chair's recommendation will be to advise and consent. For the GM stated by the Chair, the recommendation is to advise and consent. Chair Chang. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Moriwaki. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Favela is excused. Chair GM 637, 759, 822, 773, and 799. Uh, the recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much, Vice Chair Kanuha and members, Senators Rhodes and Moriwaki. There being no further business, this committee is adjourned.